What's up, everybody? This is Joe Vega and Daniela Marquez here. And last week, we told you guys about this exciting new feature called, what is it called, Daniela? Let's call it the new customer indicator. The new customer indicator. And how does it work exactly? So every time somebody who is a brand new customer uh, shops with you, you're going to get a little badge or an indicator that shows up on your super ticket, the new order notification, the order details, sort of letting you know that, oh my gosh, this is a brand new customer, kind of like that, you know, ring the bell in the shop uh, excitement um, that someone's new is here. And we're really excited about that because this is great transparent knowledge to have so that you can you know, have that personalization and, and know who's, you know, who's coming to your shop. That's fantastic. So we're going to do a bit of role playing. Okay. I'm going to be okay. the florist. So I'm going to ask you why, well, why is this important? Why is this necessary? So whenever you have a brand new person come, you want to make them feel special because if, you know, if they're coming in and, 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 you know, investing in you, you're able to sort of make that experience a little bit better for that person that's gonna increase the likelihood that they come back and become one of your loyal customers. So everyone who's new is an opportunity to make that a great impression and build that relationship uh, so that they become one of your loyal customers. Okay, but I treat all my customers special. Why do I need to know the new customers exactly? So that's great and, and, and you should do that, uh, but it's really about a personalization. So for example, your loyal customers, if you add that little tidbit, like, oh, thank you so much, your, your continued support means so much to me, they know now that you know that they've bought before. So like that sort of affirmation to the customer lets them know like, oh, they really do care. They know about me. Now, your first time customers, your new customers, it's again that affirmation like, hey, you picked me out of all the plethora of other florists. Like, I, I want to do a good job with you. And you, you're letting them know that you know, again, that they're a first time customer. So that personalization lets the customer feel really good and allows them to sort of, again, reinforce or build that relationship with you. And how exactly am I going to know? I mean, because I get my orders, uh, you know, the orders print out. I see the orders online. Sometimes I see it on my phone. Yep. Uh, how, how am I going to, how are you guys going to let me know that we got a new customer? All those places will have some sort of indication that this is, this order is coming from a, a first time customer. So on your order to, on your super ticket, for example, that information will be right there by the customer name uh, on the printouts for the new order notification. That also is going to be up at, at the top where we've had the good news snippets. If it's, a first time customer, the good news snippets is going to go away and that's going to show up there as a badge. Um, even the text alerts, it's also going to come up. So every we're trying to basically, we know a lot of florists use uh, the paper somewhere in the account. We really didn't want anyone to lose out on that information. So we wanted it to be in all the different places that uh, folks might be working off of. So it, it sounds like the system is getting upgraded with this feature, which is awesome. In a weird way, by process of elimination, the customers who don't have this, it sounds like I'm going to be able to identify my loyal customers as well then. Absolutely. Yeah. So if, the, if somebody's a repeat customer, and I, I should have uh, mentioned this, we're using the email ID as the sort of uh, identifier, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what we know that we can concretely use. If that email ID appears in the system, then uh, that person is going to be a repeat customer. So without that badge there, then you know that that is one of your loyal customers for sure. That's fantastic. So is there anything for me to do or activate it or how does it work? Nope, uh, nothing to do. It's just going to start appearing when we do the release. Um, but, you know, what we really wanted to sort of call call the attention to and, and kind of why we're doing this is not just the fact that like, okay, it says this and, and I can personalize and I can give it better attention. But one of the things that's really difficult is gaining that attention so that we can get that customer onto, uh, onto these websites. Because when it comes to gaining new customers, you really need to attract them uh, to your website. How do people actually search for flowers? How can they find the local florist inside of an order gatherer? And how can you build trust as a local florist? And again, like to your, your question before, it was like, what do I need to do? You don't need to do anything, right? And the good news is because we're doing that, you know, on your behalf through, you know, SEO and Crow and all those good things. And we don't just do simply plain old SEO, right? We do something else called? Floral SEO. 
Um, mm. Yeah, <laughs> because, you know, this is actually, uh, I, I should actually turn the question back to you because this is something that we pioneered uh, and, and I'll, I'd love to hear the, the mini version of the story behind that. But I think, you know, a lot of our partners have come to us and said like, oh, so-and-so is offering uh, an, an SEO service. And there's all these so-called experts out there, you know, claiming to do like 200 bucks and I'll do this and I'll do that. Or, or my nephew does it on the side and all that's great. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock it completely. The nephew's great. <laughs> um, but here's the difference. Like they might know SEO, but you can't just slap on SEO like peanut butter and be done. Like you actually need to know floral SEO. I don't know why I picked peanut butter, but <laughs> like it's, it's really about how people search for flowers and that intent, that very specific intent is really the value that, that we're able to understand and bring and make sure that the websites are finely, highly tuned for floral SEO. That sounds fantastic. Is there anything else that we need to know about this feature? Um, well, actually, I mentioned the Karen Hickey story. Can you can you give like the two minute version of that? Well, I'm sure every florist has heard me tell the story, but I'll say it yeah. again. On uh, 2000 in 2007, February 10th, I was living in New York City at the time, and I got a call from. Karen Hickey, which is the owner of the Awesome Blossom in Edmonton, Alberta. And she calls me around 7 a.m. And she's just bawling on the phone. She's just crying hysterically. And I asked her what's wrong. And she just keeps telling me to turn it off. And I ask her, well, turn what off? She's like, they, and she keeps yelling. They're going to yell at me. They're going to yell at me. Turn it off. I'm like, Karen, you need to stop crying and slow down and just tell me what's happening. Do you need me to call the police? What is going on? And what had happened was she came in that morning and she saw, she got really happy because she saw a bunch of orders had printed out on the printer and she was happy about that. And she, re, you know, replaced the paper. She loaded the uh, paper onto the printer, went to the cooler. And then the printer once again was out of paper. And that's when she figured out like she was up, up, way over her head in terms of, you know, she didn't buy enough flowers. She didn't get enough delivery drivers. She was just envisioning customers yelling at her because there's no way that she would have been able to do all these orders. And she was trying to tell me to get, uh, she actually told me to turn Google off at the time. So that's the mini version of the story. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of detail that goes into it, but we're trying to make this quick. Right. So. Yeah. But, but that's, that's the power of floral SEO, right? That that's the potential one done. Right. And it's not just about getting them to land right? There's the next step. Like once they land on your homepage or, or whatever, like we need to get them all the way through that purchase cycle. You know, we, we talked, we've talked about the gifter's journey, right? So the floral SEO is the attract part, but once they land, we're really guiding them all the way through to make that purchase. And that's really where the magic happens and the transaction happens and we all make money at that point. But, uh, but that's really the, the pivotal piece there. So it's like, make sure they land through for SEO and then guide them with that conversion optimization. Um, um, and that's all part of the, you know, the gifter's journey. That's great. You, you keep mentioning the gifter's journey and that's something really important to us. I would suggest any florist out there that wants to know more about it, just go to Google and just type the gifter's journey and uh, see what comes up. I like it. Awesome. So thanks so much, Neil. Thank you.